All right, it's time to have a good old-fashioned regular commentary discussion about one player and a trade price for him. Today, we are talking about the Montreal Canadiens and one of the guys on their squad that has been pretty much tossed out there as a trade option for the past, let's just say, year? Like, seriously, fans for the Canadiens always thought that this guy was going to be in a trade sometime over the past year and a bit, but... The fact is, right now, at the time of recording this audio, he still is a Canadian. So, of course, you know from the title, you know from the thumbnail, today we are talking about Sean Monaghan. Because not only has Monaghan been a very good player for the Montreal Canadiens this season, but he also could hold some very significant value on the market. Now, before we go over into the trade price and what some insiders are going out there and saying, let's go over the profile, cover our grounds, and just give a brief update to anybody who isn't a Canadiens fan trying to see and evaluate what this player is. Sean Monaghan is 29 years old, 6'1", 201 left-handed center, signed to the end of this season, 2023-2024, making $1.985 million a year. He is coming off of his 6.375 AAV million dollar AAV contract that is, excuse me, that started back out in 2016-17. That was a pretty long deal with the Calgary Flames. He was a very good player for the Flames, posting up a career high of 82 points in 78 games played. But as his career continued, he got injured more and more. He got worse more and more. And as a result, the Calgary Flames were in a really tough spot because they kind of needed to free up that dollar amount of six point something mil and Sean Monaghan at that point was a 20-point guy in 60 games played. He got sent over to the Montreal Canadiens alongside of a first-round pick. The Habs, yes, they acquired a pick in order to get Monaghan for free, and he played last season, had 17 points, 25 games played the last year of his $6 million deal, and then signed a one-year extension for this season's worth of play, where he's making the current 1.9 he has. Now, this season, Sean Monaghan has 35 points in 49 games played, on pace for about 59 total points, which is very good. He's been playing in the top power play unit for the Habs, and alongside of the let's just say bolstering of guys like Cole Caulfield, Suzuki, and Slavkovsky altogether, not to mention Mike Matheson, who for some reason just doesn't seem to pass the puck to Slavkovsky. That's been the big meme I've been seeing a lot tossed out there by Canadians fans. But there is a good group of guys who are starting to produce goals for the Montreal Canadiens, and Monaghan being a part of that list bolsters up his value because, as we had said, he's a 29-year-old center, signed to the end of this season, he's making a cheap cap hit, and he's on pace for 50 points. So, what is the price that we could be looking at here? This is what Pierre Lebrun said on Insider Trading yesterday, on January 30th. It was reported by D'Amico on Twitter. Pierre Lebrun says that his sources believe Sean Monaghan can net the Montreal Canadiens a first-round pick, especially if they retain 50% of his salary. He also says that teams will wait two to three weeks before getting serious, and Monaghan's market will be impacted by Elias Lindholm. Now, where exactly is the math there? Well, 50% of Monaghan's $1.985 million AAV puts him just under the $1 million range, which, if you're able to get a player like this who can score you a pretty good amount of net front presence power play goals and doing so at the cheap price of sub $1 million, I think a first-round pick is pretty attainable. However, there are some commenters who are going out there and saying the contrary. Like this. Jay Fresh Hockey went out there and said this also yesterday. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'll be shocked if the Canadians get a first-round pick for Sean Monaghan. Yes, he's producing at a strong rate, but contenders who are interested can presumably tell that he's putting up these points in large part because of power play deployment that he won't get when he's on their new team. Like, I'm looking around at the standings trying to find the team who I think would make that trade, and I'm not finding one. And you can kind of see here, JFresh has 28 replies to this one tweet, and there are a bunch of people saying, hey, it's Colorado, it's Pittsburgh, it's the Oilers, the Bruins, and some are even saying the Canucks, which we did talk about, actually, in a video a few days ago. But this is kind of the thing that I'm thinking about as well. If it's Vancouver, let's just say, toss out a team. Would I be comfortable trading for a potential middle to top six center who can play significant power play time, who will be making $900,000 against our cap with salary retained, and only giving up a first round pick for it? Honestly, I kind of do that deal. I know the rumors that we had looked at said that Vancouver would not 
actually be interested in Monaghan, even though there were some reports saying that they might have been scouting him. It was Rick Dollywell the other day that said straight up, yeah, I don't think they actually value him. They value Gensel and Tanev a little bit more. I get it, Tanev's a defenseman, not a center, but still, the point remains. This is kind of the direction we've been steering down in regards to the Canucks. As for the evaluation, though, when you think about it in terms of that, I start to see actual value here. Especially when you consider some of the statuses, status I, what's the plural version of status? But when you look at the situations of some of these other teams, we have talked about how the Colorado Avalanche do not have a second line. Their entire unit of Lekanen, Nichushkin, Landeskog, it's out. Lekanen is back, but the other two are still out for a while. You have a newly found forward in Zach Parise who's going to try to stabilize things. He's you know, cup chasing, which is good for him. Good for Parise chase that bag. But if you could get yourselves a legit second line center to play behind Nathan McKinnon and above a guy like Ross Colton, for example, then that would be a pretty good get. And honestly, if you're thinking about it in terms of first round picks, you want to go over semantics. Everybody says, oh, first round pick, second round pick. There's such a different weight. You know, there's a huge connotation of the weight of these two picks. Oh, a first round pick is a lot heavier than a second round pick. Well, does it really matter if the first round pick is in the 25 plus range? I mean, sure, first round pick is first round pick, but if the Vancouver Canucks get Monaghan and they trade away their first and it becomes 32nd overall, let's say they win the cup, that's just as good as a second round pick from a really bad team. So in a way, you're only really sacrificing a few spots if you trade with a playoff contender and that playoff contender knows they're going to go far and get themselves a first round pick that is near the end of the draft. I get it, you know, you kind of have to be really good to get your pick in that range, but still, if you're one of the best teams in the regular season, you can guarantee yourself a spot in the top, let's say 28, 24 to 28 range, and then 29, 30, 31, 32, those numbers will all be determined by whoever wins the second round series and everything, but still... Sean Monaghan netting a first, I think, shouldn't be that ludicrous of an idea. And I think there was also, like, a Frank Saravelli article that we had talked about. I don't know if he talked about it, actually. I take that back. There was an article that does exist where he said, essentially, that the Canadians will get two first-round picks for Monaghan. Not two in a secondary trade, but one from the Calgary Flames because of the trade that initially sent him to Montreal, and a second one in this whatever deal that he is going to get when he gets sent over. Also, there's an idea floating around saying that Sean Monaghan may actually just come back to Montreal in the offseason because he is a UFA upon expiring. This is a path that we see sometimes actually gets taken. It's very rare, but it happens sometimes. The Luke Shens of the world who sign in... Tampa Bay, win Stanley Cups, and then go back to Vancouver. The Antoine Vermettes, who are Arizona Coyotes, they get traded to Chicago, they win the Stanley Cup, and then just a few months later, they sign back with Arizona. It happens sometimes. These situations where the player and the team have such a good relationship that the player is like, yeah, you know what? I just want to go back. Like, I was comfortable there before. I'll be comfortable there again. Hopefully, I'll stick around at the power play, maybe get a few more points, and get even more assets for the Montreal Canadiens next year's trade deadline when I'm shipped off away again for yet another first-round pick because another team is desperate to acquire a secondary center. There's a lot of options here, especially when you consider the market and how things would be going with Elias Lindholm. That was the idea that Pierre Lebrun floated on this radio segment, or excuse me, TV segment, that Elias Lindholm, there are teams that are going to be fighting for him and his services, so the Montreal Canadiens, the best thing they could do is sit back and relax, because when a team goes out there and bites the bullet on Lindholm, the other teams that were also looking at Lindholm will be like, oh darn it, we just missed out on Lindholm, now we need to settle for another guy, we need to settle for somebody who's not as good as Lindholm, who wasn't an 80-point scorer recently. Monaghan was an 80-point scorer a lot further back than recently, so... There may be a little bit of a secondary market for Monaghan. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Montreal Canadiens and the idea of Monaghan fetching a first round pick in a trade. Do you think it's that simple? Do you think a top tier team would send over what is going to be a 25 plus overall pick for a guy like Monaghan? I think he's worth it. Do you? Do you think his entire point production case is mostly due to power play minutes that he's not guaranteed to be getting on other teams? And do you think that factors into whatever price he is worth on the trade market? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.